Well, good morning and welcome to United in Christ Lutheran Church's digital web space. We're so glad you're here with worship with us today. Uh, today, I'm very excited that you're going to be worshiping alongside Kathy Guffey, who's here behind the camera for the very first time. I know she's so excited to worship with you, uh, but thank you for being here. You've got a great seat here for worship this morning, uh, but we'll talk to you a few. We'll be getting worship started in just a few minutes. Kathy, they're all yours. with us today as we gather together as God's people of faith to be met by the fullness and often complicated nature of that faith. And yet nevertheless giving thanks for what it has to offer beginning right here and right now. Thank you for being here to be a part of worship this morning. Uh, I'm doubly glad that you are here with us in worship this morning because this Sunday represents our opportunity to both give thanks for and commission two of our graduates here at United in Christ. We are celebrating today the accomplishments of Larissa Shearer and Owen Art, who graduated high school kind of a couple months ago at this point. So we're behind the ball, I guess, a little bit. But thank you guys for being here. We look forward to celebrating with you this morning. Uh, as well, uh, Michelle has graciously brought together some cupcakes downstairs, representing our now alma maters. Uh, so on your way out from worship this morning, be sure to stop by the Fellowship Hall and grab a cupcake representing the schools from which our graduates have now well graduated. Uh, and thank you for being here to celebrate with them today. Uh, we're going to try something a little different this morning. We're going to start with our announcements before we dive into worship. So just a couple of things to be aware of in the days ahead. First and foremost, uh, please continue to mark your calendars for Sunday, July 25th. That's the last Sunday of this month, where we will gather together as United in Christ, not here, but down south at the Winfield Carnival Grounds, just off of Route 15, where we are going to have our second annual Christmas in July celebration. Figuring that it's on July 25th kind of made it seem like we couldn't not pass up that opportunity. So we're going to turn together It's a Good Christmas Carols and a hymn sing there outside on July 25th at 10 a.m. down at the Winfield Carnival Grounds. Uh, if you need directions, talk to me after worship or see one of our council volunteers or check their church Facebook page or website to look for details as to where we will be gathering for that service together. Uh, let's see, I believe I have one other announcement to share with us this morning, but do you have any announcements to share with us before we begin worship this morning? Um, if, if any of you don't already know that Glenn, um, we invite you Thanks to the life and ministry of Glenn Van Dyke, who served here at United in Christ for a number of years and who many of us still continue to remember fondly. Uh, and while they were never officially members and so their names and address aren't in the church directory, Terry has printed uh, address cards for Florence downstairs in the entryway on the devotions table. If you'd like to send any condolences or greetings to Florence at this time, I know that they will be well received and well appreciated. Uh, I believe that service details are forthcoming and maybe even were announced today. Um, yeah, it's on the 15th. July 15th at First Lutheran in Mifflinburg will be the services for Glenn, uh, and we'll look to, to be able to support Florence at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Any other announcements to share with us before we begin worship this morning? Wonderful. And thank you. 
Thank you for being here to be a part of this process together in community today. Our service this morning begins with our prelude followed by our opening litany, but for now I ask simply that you remain seated. That we take this time and opportunity to center ourselves. That we might breathe in the presence of the Holy Spirit here and in this place. So that as we leave from this place, then, we might do so with newfound joy and hope to continue seeking God and serving God in all that we do. Thank you. Thank you for being here in worship. Would you please rise in spirit or in body? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. Who destined us for adoption as God's children through Jesus Christ. Who has forgiven our sins according to the riches of God's grace and has made known to us the mystery of God's will. This is our God. And let us worship the Lord together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin.
God, our provider, oh, help us. It is hard to believe there is none to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and be us for life in the world. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading for this morning is from the book of Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purposes of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please rise for Christ's present in the reading of the Gospel. And this is the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Uh, King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the Baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these, peop these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it's a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias, well, she had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. 
And when he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, y yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for all his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. So she went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet, to get out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother, and when his disciples heard about it, they came and took John's body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite forward and the young folks <coughs> present together in worship this morning for a special time together up front. Come on up, gang. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you all for being here. Alex, it's good to see you again, man. Thank you for being here. Emmy and Addy, I'm so glad you guys are here. Oh, this is great. Hello, hello, hello. Here comes the, here comes Wade and Scarlet. Coming on up. Oh, we're sitting out here. That's okay. I like this. This is good. Oh, uh, guys, I'm so glad you all are here today. Thank you all for being here in church this morning. It's so good to see you all here today. Good job, I like it, that's a nice slide. Uh, I tell you what, guys, we just heard maybe one of the strangest stories you'll ever hear on a Sunday morning. So we're not gonna talk about that one today. How does that sound? Instead, we're gonna talk about something that a really smart guy by the name of Paul tells us. Can you say Paul? Paul. Paul. Do you know anyone named Paul? Yeah. Do you do know some people named Paul? I know somebody named Paul. Well, this Paul, this Paul was a guy who lived a long, long time ago. And he worked in the church, kind of like how, how we're in church. And, and he worked with people in communities like this. And, and he got to know a lot, a lot of people along the way. And, and as they grew together, they kind of they kind of started to become like a family, kind of like kind of like this family out here. I tell you, I, did you know that in my family, did you know that I have a brother and a sister? Did you know that? What? I know, go figure. It's crazy, isn't it? I have both a brother and a sister. I have a little brother and a little sister. Do you guys have brothers and sisters? I can tell because I'm looking at some of them right up here, aren't I? Yeah. You have two older sisters, Alex? Yeah, yeah. Some of us have, have siblings like that. And, and I tell you what, when, when I was growing up with my brother and sister, we knew and we trusted that, that my mom and dad and my grandma and grandpa, my aunts and uncles, they loved us all very, very much. And I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you guys have people in your own families who love you very, very much, don't you? You've got moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles who look out for you and take care of you and all these good things, right? But eventually, as I started to get a little older and I spent a little less time with them, I met some other people. Some especially like my wife, Kelsey, who maybe some of you have met over there. She's the one sitting up front right there. I'm going to put her on the spot for a minute. Yeah. And as I got to know Kelsey, I learned that I love Kelsey very, very much. And, and get this, because, because my family loves me so much, my family started to love Kelsey like she was a part of the family. My parents started to think of me not just as a son, but they thought of Kelsey like their own daughter, too. It's a good thing when we can extend that. See, Paul, in his letter today, Paul tells us 
that because Jesus loves us so very, very much, we get to be a part of God's family. Like, like how, how when our mommies and daddies and our grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles start to love each other a lot, they become part of the family. Like when I started to love Kelsey and she became part of the family, Jesus loves each and every one of you so much that you get to become part of God's family. Yeah, <laughs> believe it or not. And that, that is something worth celebrating. Because when our families celebrate, we can celebrate too. And today in worship, we're celebrating two of our family members, Larissa and Owen, some of whom you guys know, because they have finally finished all, well, almost all of school. Have you, are you guys done with school yet? No. No, we're just getting started, aren't we? They have finished school now. So today, so today we're celebrating with them because they are our family because Jesus loves them too. So I tell you what, guys, the next time you see part of your family, or the next time you're celebrating with people like Larissa and Owen, can you remember, oh, goodbye, Abby. Can you remember, <laughs> can you remember how much God loves each and every one of you? And how you are a part of God's family, and how we can celebrate in that family all together. Can you guys remember that? Yeah, why well, kinda, huh? Well, we'll try our best. How does that sound? All right, thank you guys. Uh, there's two things we should do before we head back to our seats. What do you think they are? Get a yeah, we should get a lollipop and say a prayer, don't you think? And, so let's. And, and do that. Oh yes, three things we should do before we head back to our seats. And do that. Dip our hands in the water. That's right, Scarlett. So let's do the prayer <laughs> one first. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads because that helps us concentrate when we pray. Oh, gotta get that shoe on first. Now let's fold our hands and bow our heads because that helps us concentrate. Dear God, we give you so much thanks for welcoming us as part of your family to celebrate with each other. We give you thanks today, especially for our members of our family, for Larissa and Owen, and all that they have done together. God, we also most especially, though, give you thanks for your son, Jesus, who loves us so very much that we are always going to be part of your family. We ask all this and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Whew. All right, guys. We can go ahead and get one of these lollipops before we head back to our seats now. There's plenty of flavors and colors here. And before we stop at the font on our way, there we go. Thank you guys for being here in church this morning. I think it's Hawaiian Punch. How cool is that? Oh, no, not that cool, though. There you go. Thank you for being here, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Addie. Thank you, guys. Wait, would you like one or you go to pass? Okay, cool. Deal. All right, we can head back to our seats now and dip in the font on the way. You guys are getting so good at that. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. There you go. Ah, that's how we remember that we're all a part of God's family. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. Cherry's not good enough to cut it anymore, I guess. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Sex, scandal, politics, abuse of power, infidelity, murder. Not the pitch for another HBO television series, as much as it might sound like it. It is, in fact, the backdrop for our gospel text today. And holy cow, is it wild. <laughs> Did you hear it? Did you hear just how messed up this story is? I mean, I mean, it's a wonder how it ever managed to sneak its way in the Bible, let alone give credence to our lectionary to be read on a Sunday morning as somehow a, a gospel text. Because the story itself is beyond strange. And it's only made stranger by the backdrop leading up to this moment. The moment that we hear in Mark's gospel this morning comes about right after our text from last week. Do you remember? 
you remember how last week we heard about Jesus sending out, commissioning the twelve to go two by two out into the world to share in the mission and ministry of God's kingdom rushing into this world? That's the backdrop that we hear when we arrive with Herod this morning. Herod apparently has caught wind of what this Jesus is doing. He's caught word of what he's all about. And to Herod, it sounds like a familiar episode. Because Herod, Herod's already gone, tet a tet. He's gone head to head with a similar figure, like this Jesus seems to present himself as. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Before we can understand Herod's reaction, we first need to understand who this is. Herod is. He, he only gets a passing sort of reference in Mark's gospel because Mark already assumes that we know the guy. That we know just kind of how messed up he is along the way. You see, you see, the Herod that we hear about this morning it isn't the Herod of Matthew's gospel who the wise men go and visit on their way to see the baby Jesus. It, it's that Herod's son. And, and in this Herod is ruling over this territory of Galilee, this, this region in which Jesus is currently operating. But, but Herod, Herod, while trying to maintain control over the good Jewish people of the region, while still trying to represent this group of individuals, Herod's kind of sold out his soul. Herod, Herod's sold out his people. This Herod likes being king so much that he's willing to do just about anything to stay that way. And, and much like the movies of old, Herod comes to realize that it's good to be king. Herod learns what that power can bring with him. He learns how to get away with more than the average person can in his own lifetime. And so Herod does. By cozying up to the Roman powers of the world, by cozying up to the emperor, by cozying up to the empire, Herod is able to create for himself a nice, cushy spot to enjoy some power and privilege with his station. Boy, howdy, does he use it in some strange way. Like, like a miniature arc on Days of Our Lives. <laughs> Herod's life plays out like a soap opera for some time. See, Herod, Herod also has siblings. Herod's got his own family, and, and there's factions that are breaking down. In, in the wake of their father's death, part of the empire, part of the territory is divided up among brothers. And Herod receives this territory of Galilee. But, but what Herod doesn't receive along the way is somebody to fall in love. He doesn't receive a, a partner, a spouse, a wife for himself. Instead, instead, his brother Philip gets to marry, this is the weird part, their niece, Herodias. I see you rolling your eyes already. I'm not, like, listen, go look it up. Herod's brother Philip marries their brother's daughter, Herodias, to become Philip's wife. But, but that's not enough for our Herod. Because our Herod, it seems, also had a thing for Herodias. Our Herod also had a desire for his own niece. And so, so our Herod pursues her. Even while his brother Philip's still alive, breaking all sorts of codes of conduct and social taboos, Herod pursues his brother's wife slash their niece. Whether married or not, takes her into his own household. I mean, I mean talk about the young and the restless, right? <laughs> the story is just wild. It's full of all sorts of scandalous nature. It's filled with all sort of vices along the way. The fact that this Herod can exhibit such power just at his mere whim speaks volumes about what he was willing to wield into the world. But of course, but of course before too long, 
there comes a voice, one that we mark and celebrate every year, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. John the Baptist soon arrives on the scene. And part of John the Baptist's message, as he's proclaiming this message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, this baptism in the River Jordan, John is also calling in a sense of accountability. Just, just as the process of repentance is accountability for the people who gather at the riverside, John is also calling accountability for the very people in power. He's calling out Herod for the actions that he's seeing, the, the devolving of these standards, the, the corruption, the greed, the unfettered grasping for whatever you might want. John says that this has no place. In the kingdom he's calling to declare, these ways of corruption aren't going to stand, so he takes Herod to the mat. He starts calling him out, saying that it was not lawful for you to do what you did, Herod. Not only was it unethical, but it went against our entire code of conduct. You got it all wrong. Shock and surprise, though, to the Herod sitting in power, he doesn't quite like that message. More than that, apparently, his newfound wife and niece, Herodias, also doesn't like the message either. Which is how we arrive at our synopsis today. As we watch all of these major players finally arrive and come to a head, we watch the cataclysmic event of what this power struggle looks like. As John the Baptist continues this message, calling out the Herod family in power, Herod ultimately decides to wield that power. In what seems to be an exemplary model of boastful arrogance and pride, Herod, at his own birthday party, <coughs> celebrates by allowing the daughter who has pleased all of those who are gathered to make whatever wish she wants. Whatever you want, I will give it to you, Herod says, even up to half my kingdom. The daughter, of course, seizing the opportunity to gain some old favor within this corrupt power play in household, goes and consults her mother, who, mind you, still wants to put an end to this John the Baptist. So seizing the opportunity, Herodias, the now former brother-in-law's wife, now made our own wife, but still the niece, takes the opportunity. Put an end to this voice decrying this family. Putting an end to this voice questioning their authority. Put an end to this voice providing a different way of imagining what that community should look like. So she tells the daughter, go back and ask Herod for John the Baptist's head. Nothing would make me happy. The girl apparently takes a little bit of creative license. She does. She asks for John's head, but she wants it served on a platter. Talk about vivid imagery. <laughs> but of course, Herod, now caught in the rock and hard place of his own pride, yet out of his curiosity about this John, has to do what always happens when you sell yourself to the powers of the world. He has to give in and cater to what those powers now demand. He's got to make an offering to keep his own privilege in station. So despite his own curiosity about this Baptist crying out in the wilderness, he sends for the guards. They take his head. They bring it back, served on the platter, just as was asked. So I have to ask, what the heck do you do with a story like this? Because it is absolutely bizarre. But the way I look at it, the, the way I heard it again this morning, it, it, it seems like amid this story of sex and scandal and power and privilege and politics and corruption and murder, there is both some good news and some bad news. 
So which one do you want first? <laughs> Let's start with the bad news. Yeah, that's right, Jeff. We'll give you the bad news. I'll, I'll knock you down and build you back up. How do you like that? <laughs> Let's start with the bad news. The bad news. And this might come as a shock. It, it might come as late breaking news to all of us who gather here. But what we're doing, the actions that we commit ourselves to here and in this place on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, this way of life, this pattern of living, this way of being in this world, it's dangerous. It, it might just demand your head one day. Because this way of being, much like John the Baptist's cry, goes against so much of what the world would have us do. Because John the Baptist was crying out against Herod. He wasn't just crying out against one person. This wasn't just one interpersonal conflict. This was John going up against the powers of the world. This was John taking on the power of the empire. And the empire, the Herods of the world, they demanded complete and unequivocal subservience. The empire demanded that you give the entirety of yourself to its service. And in return, it might, it might, it might, just give you a little bit back. But if you let it, that empire will take all for what you have. See Herod, after all. As the face of that empire in our story, we see what allegiance to those powers can do. It rots from the inside out. This unfettered allegiance to unfettered gain to lustful compulsion for more and more and more, it, it leaves you a broken shell of a person. Just as the Herod of our story is left looking like a spineless heel by the end. And yet, and yet that's the most dangerous place of all. The bad news is that the world's got a lot of power behind the bad news is it's going to do everything it can to make you fall into its way. To seek to gain only for yourself, as Herod did. It's going to demand that you seek your own ways forward, just as Herod did. It's going to demand that you walk out with unfettered gains at the expense of those around you, just like Herod and in so doing, it'll try to take you for all that you have. But this, this community then, this way of speaking something else into the world, just as John Baptist spoke something else into his world, well, that could get you in trouble. Because it shows that those powers, for what they are, empty shells of brokenness. Sandy footing under which everything shifts. The bad news is that this, this will go against what the world has in mind. But there is good news, Jeff. <laughs> the good news is that's where God steps in. The good news is that even when the powers of this world would call us to a different way of being, this kingdom of God breaking in right here and right now says to heck with those powers. There is something new at work. There is a new vibrancy of life for God's people. There is a new pattern unfolding right here and right now that will seek a better way. See, see, where the powers of the world would seek to only build up themselves, where they would seek and act out of only self-interest, at the expense and cost of all others, paving them over to enjoy a station of privilege and power. The kingdom of God 
antithetical to the kingdom of the empire, offers something different. It brings that newness of life, not earned by sacrificing others along the way, but gifted and given freely, starting from the bottom most wrong reaching out to this world with the masses gathered along the riverside with John. This kingdom brings a new way, one in which you don't need to worry about trying to earn it for yourself, one in which you don't need to worry about trying to figure out what you will sacrifice on the altars of this world next, one in which you have already been given everything you need, a kingdom in which this life and love of God have already been made apparent. It's what Paul names so well in his letter to the Ephesians this morning. That because of Christ's love, because of his inbreaking of this kingdom into this world, you have already been deemed as children of this inheritance. Nothing you do, nothing you need to summon, nothing you need to sacrifice along the way will be asked of you. Because Christ has already made it possible. Christ has already gifted you this fullness of God's kingdom, this abundance of life, starting right here and right now. And now, going from this place, then, we have the privilege and the honor of sharing that good news with a world that seems to operate by only that bad news. We become the envoys like John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness that the ways in which the world sells in power, the ways in which it wheels and deals, are not the ways it needs to be. God offers something different. God offers this newness of life, this restoration, this uplifting of the lowly, starting where the world thinks it's least possible starting with the very individuals that this world is willing to put on the altar to sacrifice for their own gains in the first place. So may we carry that message. May we bring this good news into a world filled with bad news. May we convey that this new way forward will seek the betterment of all God's people, starting with the lowest and the least starting with those who we never thought we could be aligned with, starting with those we were willing to look over to gain for ourselves. May we share it. May we share it well. Because it's the good news we depend upon as well. Because otherwise, otherwise we might just lose our heads. But thanks be to God for a mission such as this. Thanks be to God or counterintuitive way such as this. Thanks be to God for the opportunity to share it well. Amen.
Please rise in the spirit of God. Together let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Let us come before the Triune God in prayer. Holy Parent, you welcome your people into one family and gather all things to yourself. Bestow your grace upon your beloved church. Lavish your wisdom upon us and redeem us for our faults. That by our witness all might praise your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Awesome Creator, you steadfastly tend to the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of sycamore trees. Spring up green growth from the earth, nourish the growth of fruit, grain, and other crops, and bless the work of farmers and laborers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the oppressed, turn the ears of those who are in power to the voices of prophets in our own day. Protect those who speak differently who speak difficult truths when it is risky to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, you are near to those who endure difficulty. Comfort all survivors of violence, guard the refugee and the immigrant, and protect all those who are victims of pre prejudice and discrimination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for this holy house and all who worship here. We pray especially for those whose efforts behind the scenes often go unnoticed. For the custodian and maintenance workers, for our office staff, and for all our volunteers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for the saints, martyrs, prophets who have died in the faith, especially Benedict of Nursia. We remember those in this community who have recently died, especially Glenn Van Dyke. United with them as God's children, assure us that we are yours forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Well, at this time, we are not casting around our offering plates just yet. Please know that the offering plates are stationed at all the entrances and exits to the sanctuary here. Morning. We remain grateful all for all the ways in which you partner with us financially here at United in Christ. Uh, but for now, as we prepare during this offering time to bring the whole of ourselves to this table, uh, let us do so with newfound hope and joy. And so the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy. That we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. So with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, saying, Alleluia, come the Holy Spirit. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise. Beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We, we praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness. Through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We, we bless, bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life. Near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, and with us now. We, we thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it. He gave thanks. 
And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And giving thanks, he poured it out and gave it to those around him, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church without end. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us and sang our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Here at United in Christ, we understand that this invitation to communion is Christ's own invitation. And thus all who are gathered here are welcomed at this table. Uh, we invite you to come forward using the center aisle, making one line zippering together on your way forward. And when you arrive at the front, to take one of the plastic cups to set here on the front table. Then you'll receive the bread and return to your side of the sanctuary to receive the wine. And return to your seats by the side aisle, placing your plastic cups in the plastic bins at the end of each should you need or prefer, we do have grape juice and gluten-free wafers available here on the front table. Please just take them as you arrive at the front of the sanctuary this morning. But please, come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Please be seated.
spirit or in body. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christ's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite forward Larissa and Owen and their families up front for our blessing of graduates. And I'm inviting our council president, Lisa Raybuck, to come forward as well to share in this blessing together this morning. First, I did forewarn and fair warn them. I'm giving each of them their moment for a stump speech. So, Owen and Larissa, if you'd like to take the pulpit mic there and let folks know where you're heading in the months ahead, uh, now that you've officially graduated. Uh, I'm going to be uh, going to school at Wallace State, which is in Alabama, two-year school, play baseball, and then I don't know what I'm studying yet, so I'm going to the ideas. <laughs> We'll put a bunch of suggestions in a hat and draw out for worship. How's that going? That sounds great. We're going to play ball. I love it. Thank you all. And the words I'm going to Bloomsburg University for biology pre-med, and I'm in the honors college. So. Excellent. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. We are so excited to share with both of you and with your families here this morning. Lisa's going to go ahead and take this hot mic over here, uh, and I'm going to ask you guys to come and gather a little more friends there. Perfect. 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 Thank you. Larissa and Owen, you have grown up here on the stories of God. We have told them to you, sung them to you, acted them out, hoping to teach them to you and in turn, in, with gratitude, listen to you, tell them to us, sing them, act them out, teaching us in the process. We've tried to live them as best we could, confessing our failures, confessing to our assurance that it is far better to have tried to live these stories and fallen short of their fullness than to have given up on the possibilities within them and never tried to live them at all. We have prayed for you more than you know, both in frequency and in urgency. Amidst our prayers, we give thanks for you continually. And today, we celebrate your achievement with pride in what you've done and in who we see you becoming. We will not put words in your mouth. Words of profession, words of commitment, and, and we pray less that you claim any particular propositions of belief than that you believe in the stories you've grown up with and on, the possibilities of the world being turned upside down and inside out. We pray these stories will sustain you, encourage you, inspire you, transform you, accompany you wherever you go, whatever you do, because these are the stories we believe so much richer than most any story of our culture. The stories of great inversion, of tremendous surprise, of profound wonder, of deep joy, of God's truth and grace, God's love, and the redeeming of all creation. These are the stories we pray you remember, reread, rethink, and choose. Choose to live toward, choose to live into. We've no more important gift to offer you. These are the stories we pray you come to be worth your own self. This we pray today and through the years to come. Amen. And so, Larissa and Owen, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Let's give thanks to God for the witness and lives of Larissa and Owen. Before we head back to your seats, folks, we just have some gifts of excitement for the two of you as you set off on this next journey. Congratulations, and thank you for being here. This is great. And we'll continue with worship this morning with our ascending hymn number 710, Let Streams of Living Justice, as found printed in your bulletin.
peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us go in peace and share the good news. Thanks.